All right. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Oh, how are you all doing? Hope we had a great weekend. This is the um, 12th week. So here we'll be looking at um, LinkedIn profile optimization. Basically, it's just about um, boosting your online presence. So but before we start, LinkedIn is just one of the um, platforms that you can use to like boost your online presence. Aside that, there are other platforms, and I, I, I assume that we know some other platforms, so you can just like type them out. So one aside those ones like the GitHub, which other one is there? Hello. So um the GitHub is there, your um link. Medium is there as well. Well, LinkedIn is just one of those platforms that um, if that employers and even people searching for jobs go to. So here, I'll just look at how um, we can boost our LinkedIn. I assume like most of us already have a LinkedIn profile, but if we don't, you can open up one, you can sign up to one already. So LinkedIn is just is one of the largest online professional networking platform that is there. So and it has over a billion users. Basically, it helps both recruiters and even people that are searching for jobs. So like um, put out put yourself out there. So, so what we're looking at here is how to boost our LinkedIn profile such that it will attract recruiter uh, rec recruiters. So that if um, hiring managers or people that are like looking for even freelancers and the likes, when they see your profile, they'll be like, okay, this person can do the job because it has to showcase your skills, your competence to, to do the job that they are looking for. And here, I so now you are still like looking for, maybe some people have already settled on the track they want to go into. Some people are still like um along the lane, they've not yet, um they've not yet determined the one they want to choose. But either way, if you are choosing maybe machine learning, data engineering, generative AI, whatever you track, you are going to be focusing on moving forward. Your LinkedIn profile should be able to like tell, even from just looking at it, that okay, this is what this person is working on. These are the skills the person can and has, and this is the type of work the person can handle. So your LinkedIn profile should be able to like showcase those things, even at first glance. They should be attractive even at first glance. So and that's what we'll be looking at here. So why are we now using LinkedIn? Why are we talking about LinkedIn? We read it like the resume is there. Maybe you've talked about your cover letter. All of those things are there as well. But LinkedIn is very important because as um, the world is evolving and most things is just like um, like on the internet and this um, connectiv connectiveness and the likes. So LinkedIn will most recruiters when they are looking for employees, even when you apply for jobs and you've submitted your CV, you see like you maybe you included a link to your uh, LinkedIn profile. People will still go on to check your LinkedIn profile because in some cases where um, maybe your LinkedIn could be like very targeted to that specific role you are applying to, your LinkedIn may not be targeted to that specific role you are applying to, to in that company. It, instead, it will showcase who you are as a whole like other projects you've worked on that may not necessarily be um that may not necessarily be applicable to the role you are applying for but to give the recruiting manager like, an overview of who you are other things you can handle and the likes so that's why linkedin is important and that's one of the major difference between the linkedin and the resume they have a very and they are very they are very they are very similar they have a lot of things in common and um i assume you have your updated cv now right You've updated your CV. Okay. So um, since you have your CV updated, so like editing your LinkedIn profile and making it um, suit the role you'll be seeking for moving forward, it will be much easier because there are a lot of things in common. So now, if you are looking at your LinkedIn profile, it has to be authentic. You don't have to uh, maybe lie there or make it like make yourself more than what you really are and like just be authentic and be true to yourself. And then you should be able to attract the right people 
from the onset what which, what um your profile who are they targeted to what like you should be able to attract the right people and then it should be consistent with your cv with other portfolio even if you have maybe your medium other things it should be consistent all your um all your documents they should be consistent and they should be accurate all true and also just like our cv the linking should be easy for machine learning and systems to review and to collect information as as well then another thing and since you you just like edited your cv so i'm assuming when you are working with your linkedin it should be also um current but don't just like after we've done the whole session you've um, updated your linkedin profile then you just leave it like that for like um, say three months and just leave it so once you have other achievements maybe other projects you've worked on other skills you've um, you've achieved along the line always be updating your linkedin profile so it should be current and you should try as much as possible to have all the sections complete if you have award you look at the different sections in the linkedin moving forward but every um we have some sections that are very composite there are some that are optional but you should try as much as possible even the ones that are optional if, if you have those things put them there on your linkedin profile as well then always um proofread them for grammatical errors even typographical errors just proofread your um, linkedin profile as well and when you are like um working on them you should just pay attention to how you are editing your profile and put keep in mind that the main essence of your linkedin is it should attract the right people so when you are um when you are editing your linkedin profile you should put that in mind and right now i assume the main person you are trying to attract is the hiring manager or recruiters that are like seeking people that want to do um, a specific job be it the data engineering or whichever tracks you you've chosen so now let's just dive into the different sections that um are in the sea the first one is the top matter and this one is like it is very very important because most times when you view someone's profile this is the first thing that like um jumps at you is there this is the first part that jumps at you even before you start reading through maybe their experiences their about section any other section this is the first thing that attracts you and even maybe for recruiters or even you if you are searching for other people online once you type in the name this is like the first part that will come up like the um their names and then this their head um, headline as well so this first part it is very very important starting even from the um the banner here that you have here going to your profile picture and then your name to the headline so all of those things you should be um, pay, you should pay attention to them and then we'll start from the first one which is the banner so the banner too is very important and you can use um, Canva to just um, to design one. So your your background and um, your banner could be just like your name, for example, this Abel's profile. So his banner is just his name and here it showcases that he's a generative AI engineer and then he included his email. So even from the profile, looking at it first on, these are the things that will jump right at you. You will know the person's name, oh, this is what he does and the likes. Even before you start reading through their experiences, maybe the projects they've worked on. So please, when you are um, editing your profile, I'll advise that you um, include your banner and then your profile picture. So some people, they put other pictures here, like even any of these other tech pictures, they put it at the background, which is fine, but um, I think it's better you put something like this and you can develop one with Canvas, it's very easy. They have different templates that you can use, so you can just choose anyone. And if you're a graphic designer and you have the time, you can also develop one yourself from scratch. So aside the banner, the next thing is your profile picture. So it should take a professional profile picture, which will display your name. And depending on the, um, okay, here you are seeking for jobs. So try to like be, will I say amikeru? It should like, for example, this um, person's picture here, it is professional and it's just kind of, I cannot say tell exactly who he is, but at least it gives you an idea. So not, 
taking pictures where you just like phone my or you take one that is like a passport or the like so just take a professional picture you can tell your friend to take a picture of you you can um maybe go to the studio to have one done just take a professional picture and put it there then the next thing here is your name so you have starting with your if maybe if um your it should be consistent with your cv and if you go by just your first name and your last name that's okay if you have a middle name you can include it you can put um just the first letter of your middle name as well but the most important thing is your name should be consistent across your linkedin profile your cv and the likes every other document that you have so your name should be consistent across everything now we've talked about the banner and the profile picture and your name. So the next thing here that is equally important is this headline. So there are different ways that people um, use like to write these their headlines, but basically the headline should demonstrate your job title and maybe your value proposition, what you bring, and then the next maybe some tools that you use or other interests that you may have maybe you have all this volunteering interest but try to limit your headlines the things that will be there to about four to maximum of five things that you list there so so that it's not just don't just bombard it like you are this you are that you are all this you are all that like just put in your job title say for example from this person's profile we put here like is a generative ai engineer and then included machine learning software engineer all of those things are fine but if you want to work on yours you can just put your job title maybe some um valid proposition that is in the cases of um maybe what you work on and then the some of the tools you use so here is valid proposition here is applying ai and machine learning expertise to drive innovation in software development and then this is like his job title and then you can add some other tools that you use or you can just include some other things that detail, like tell other people about you. It could even be maybe you're interested in some other social economy or any other thing that interests you, but please just limit it to about three or four stuff. They just put them there. So that is for the headline. So here we have these two sections. So the first one is your current, your current place of work. And then the second one is your education. So for the current place of work, so this place, it will um, link them with putting the place that you work, that you work currently based on your updated profile. Then the next one will be your education. So this education part, the 10 Academy here is the one that is showcasing. But I assume most of us or everyone here has like an undergraduate degree. So you may be thinking like, which one should you include there? Is it your undergraduate degree or the 10 Academy training that you've um, undergone? so it depends but so this is the logic i will try to like um advice you use if you are applying say for example you are applying for uh maybe you're a data engineer or generative engineer or any of those things and then you have a background in computer science you have a background in software engineering like all of those other tech background you can include your um your you can include your undergraduate education here or you can include even the 10 academy one so the choice is just either one is fine well if you have say you have a life science background you have a um, background from the social sciences or other management sciences that are not quite related to the tech um, industry so i would advise that your education here should be the one of 10 academy but if it is uh, if you have educational backgrounds from that is similar to all these other things, you can choose to put that one there, or you can also include the 10 academy one. The, the choice is yours. But if you have maybe if, um, your background is in other sciences that are not tech related, I would advise you put 10 academy education up here for recruiters to see. And even generally, I would say you should put the 10 academy one year, but then the choice is yours. Anyway. So, now, um, I hope you understand that part. Hello? Okay, okay. So um, please, if I am just like speaking, because I don't know if you can hear me, just let me know like if you have a question, 
can just raise up your hand even along the line. All right, so then the next thing is your contact information. So this one is not really a big deal, just includes where you live, your country, where you stay, and the likes. So here now, your connection. So if you are new to LinkedIn, you may have less than 500 connections. So what you have to do here is you um, connect with more people, send um, more requests out there. So basically, try to increase your connections. Have a minimum of 500 connections. Not just, and when I say you should start sending out connections, it does not mean you should just be sending to random persons. You know, here we are trying to make our LinkedIn profile targeted. So you should put people that are within this space, like the tech space that you are applying for, people that maybe that you that have already, maybe they're already working, or people that already have maybe um, top voices in those fields, like people just to expand your network. So people that, you know, they will really, um, they are relevant to the field they are interested in. So that way, once you maybe start posting stuff, you, they'll get, um, they'll be aware of it, or once them to the post, you'll also be notified as well. So if you have less than 500 connections, I would advise you increase that. And if you, even if you have 500 connections, you can still work on them, just expand your network. And LinkedIn is not just about you. When I say expand your network, not just about sending requests and just leaving it at that. So sometimes, especially now, like you have the required skills and you are just like coming off. So sometimes you can just, if you see someone that already maybe working in a role you are interested in or something like that, you can just hit them up on LinkedIn, just like connect, try to connect with them, like introduce yourself, have some them like just talk to them and the likes so you can also do that on linkedin so um so for this top matter what is most important your in the banner you should work on your banner your profile picture your name your headline then this section which you um show your current place of work and then your education then your contact information as well and then the your connections then for these followers, your followers will grow as you keep on posting stuff and connecting with people. So the next thing we'll talk about here is the about section. And the about section. So this about section is just like um your elevator pitch. So it should be about 50 words. It should be about 50 words somewhere of so once the person reads that they're able to capture who you are so there you should demo you should tell them like what who you are currently maybe how you got there or what you're currently um interested in what um tools you use some of your skills say for example in this first one the person said a junior generative ai engineer with a foundation in computer engineering including proficiency in back-end development so reading from this person's about you understand like the person's background and then you'll be able to understand the type of skills they have and what they are interested in working on moving forward so there as a recruiter they'll be able to gauge okay this if the person has the relevant skills that they, they are searching for or if the person's future career goes aligns with theirs if the person will be a good fit to their maybe their company or their organization or any of those things so looking at their second one too is also similar to the first one so basically your about section it should demonstrate your skills and maybe some tools or platforms that you use and some of all those other things then it should also include um, what you are interested in working on or if you're interested in maybe any other social act um, activities that is not you can also include it there but please in this about section try to like um refrain from and all these um political talks or all these religious talks and all of those things just make it professional like make it tailor it to yourself keeping in mind like your goal is to um is to make recruiters to like be attracted to your profile and also you should use the active voice and not the passive voice and be uh, aware of your like um your tenses so the next one we will talk about when you've done your uh, talk about and then the about session we have the experience section and this experience section is really really important so how should we go about the experience just like with your cv when you are you know when you are describing your, the rules you worked on just use the box rule and i'm sure you are very familiar with that by now 
So like you should demonstrate what you achieve, how you achieve this, then the impact it has as on generally. So in your experience, you should have maybe at least three work experience that are relevant to um, the role you're applying, like that you're interested in, or to the field that you're interested in, let me not say role, the field you're interested in. Then, for example, this part now, he started with a junior MLOps and automation engineer at the place he's working, also demonstrates if, was it a full-time role, was it a part-time role, internship, or was it remote? Then one thing you should also be cognizant of here is the time. So when you started, when you ended, please make sure these things are consistent across your CV. Because in some cases, some people make the mistake of maybe um, here, for example, they can put here that they started February, then in the CV, they will put it that they started in May. So those things, they are like little discrepancies, but they go a long way. So try as much as possible to make sure like your experiences, even the date you started, when you ended, all of those things are consistent across your LinkedIn profile, your CV, and if you have other portfolios as well, maybe your website or any other places that you showcase these things make sure that they are consistent across all then when you are describing the rule you should try to use the box rule you should try to use the box rule to describe your role and please just like limit it to about three specific specific roles that you did so like don't try to like make it so long and the likes so just about three roles is okay then here you'll be able to highlight the skills that you use there maybe the skills you use or even sometimes the tools you use so you'll be able to highlight it even for each of the experience that you'll be talking about so that's for the um work experience then the next one is your education section so it is in the education section that you put the 10 academic training that you've done and so you, you put the 10 academy that you've done so here you can also put like just a short description of what the training was about and some of the relevant skills that you gained during the training you can include them here so let me now um go back to this education section just like i stated earlier so for your um, bachelor's degree if you want to include it or if you have other graduate degrees if you want to include it here you can put the name of the university the degree you earn when that took place then this grade is optional you can include your cgpa if it's a very strong one and you know it will boost your profile yes you can leave it out it's not really important to put it is optional so the next one here is relevant coursework the person um he included this relevant coursework because he has a background in software engineering which is equally important to the field he's interested in now say for example if you have a similar background say in computer engineering or software engineering or any of those others in tech backgrounds that are also relevant you can decide to like put relevant coursework here it makes sense but if you are from say the life sciences or you are from other um backgrounds that are not really relevant you may decide to like um our advice you not to include it here our advice is you not to include it here so except um say you are it's okay you're a data engineer but in a specific sector say for example if you have background in life science and then you're interested in the health sector but also as a data engineer you can put it there but right now we all know like you cannot start specifying or let me not assume but right now i assume like you cannot start specifying like um say you are now limiting yourself to a specific sector that you're interested in but say moving forward you're already grounded in the field like you are now specializing in a specific sector or say you're interested so you can just you can still include them here but now if your background is not in this tech field you can our advice you don't include this relevant coursework because they are not really important anymore so and here you want to like showcase the ones that are now very important to the, the field you're interested in the new career you are switching over to which is the 10 academy education so and just as i said before you should enable show um school in in your intro Option button so that at the end of the day you'll be able to like have this here highlighted in your top profile as well so when you've talked about your um education and just like the experience please your education too should be consistent with across your cv as well i mean the dates you started when you ended all of those things they should be consistent there
Then the next thing is the project that you've worked on. This is optional, but for you, it is important you include them to replace your project. And also, before I move forward, because on Thursday, I'm going to be taking you on profile, like building your portfolio. So once you have that, once you build your portfolio, you can include it in this top part, like you don't have a space for um website, so you can include it there. So you can put it then and also in your about section, you can put it here like explore more ads, then you include your portfolio that you've built. Then also when you are talking about your project, so when you are talking about the project here, the title of the project should be clear and concise. Say for example, this one included contract advice SORGAC system. So you included it here. Then you should describe each of the projects. You should tell them the problem that you address, the models of perhaps the algorithm or any other tools you used or that you developed alongside. Then the results of your uh, your work and probably the impact it has. So you should try to like relate all of those things together. And then you will include the skills you use. Then remember, like in your topmost matter and also in your about section, you've included your portfolio. But that is just like the general link to the say the landing page of your profile so but here you want to include the specific link to the projects you are talking about so here you, for each of those projects you put their link there that will link that will direct whoever clicks the link to that specific project not to the general profile like those ones in your top most of the about section so for each of these projects you've worked on in at STEM Academy, or perhaps if you have other projects that you've also worked on that are also relevant to say the track you are pursuing now, so you, you will include them there in the project session. And that's one thing that makes LinkedIn like stand out compared to your CV, like make it different. Let me not say stand out, makes it different compared to the CV. Because in the case of LinkedIn, you can include all the projects you've worked on. You can put all your project, projects there is not too much. Talk about it at length, anyhow you want to discuss them. Just like detailing the problems you, you address, the algorithm and all of those things. But you know, when you're working with your CV, it is, CV is for a specific role you're applying to. So most times you have to, you want to highlight projects that are really relevant to the role you're applying to. So there it may limit you to about say two projects that you're able to maybe showcase in your CV, or um, say even one project that you're able to showcase in your CV. But with the LinkedIn to include every project you worked on, you can include all the projects you worked on. If you have publication as well, you can include them. So far they are relevant to the field now. So that's why LinkedIn is um, important to like it to give the recruiter a general overview of who you are. Then the next one now to talk about is this disclaimer. So when you are um when you want to start like editing your LinkedIn profile, at the topmost page, um you will see this notification there. So before you start editing, please try to like put this thing off. Because if you don't, everything, every time you maybe make any changes on your profile, it will notify your network, like, like your other connections, people that are connected to you. So it will notify them that, oh, you've changed this, you've changed that. And sometimes it can be annoying. So you can just like switch them off when you are editing your profile. And then when you are done, you can put it on back just to let them know that, okay, you've done that. But when you are like editing your profile, try to put them off. And you see these things in the experience section, in the education section, in the project section. So try to just put them off. So other things that you can include in your CV, in your LinkedIn. So we've talked about this other major stuff, like your um, about section, section, your work experience, your um, projects, your education. Those ones are the very important stuff. But aside that, there are other things that you can include. So um get verified. So there's this new stuff on LinkedIn that is like you get verified. So you getting verified just makes you like it adds this authenticity to your to your profile. So you should try to like get verified. And I think you can do that with your mobile. So just log in to the LinkedIn app on your mobile and then you get verified as well. Then remember to include your recognition. If you have other awards and recognitions or any other um, things like that, you can include them there and just talk about it a little bit. 
then if you have other volunteering experience you can put it there as well other um certifications you can include it so i also advise that perhaps you've worked with people and even at Sten academy you've worked with people even with this um the the friday training um led conversations the pairing together okay how you get verified so on most is done on the mobile so on your mobile if you go i cannot show you here on the desktop because getting verified like is is limited to like the profile but once you log into your linkedin let me let me see So it's just like you know this um on other social media like the twitter and the likes that you have this blue stuff there so you, it's the same thing with um with linkedin too. so you just get verified so once if you log in through your your um through your mobile the mobile app so once you log into your profile you see something like verify now just below your name so once you click that then so you just move on then you follow the instructions then but it's on the mobile that you can open that so um the next thing so um test machine so after the session you can just like try it and if you do not see it they just let me know then the next thing is um request recommendation so you can request recommendation from people you work with maybe even maybe your previous work or even this 10 academic trainings that you've worked with from your um tutors just get recommendations it also boosts your profile when you put that see that what other people have to say about you so you get recommendations you can also um give recommendations as well then another thing our advice you've logged in you've not see it um well i is here on mind mm. but i know it's not on the um you cannot like get verified on on desktop let me see I'll I'll send a screenshot to the link now to the um channel. Okay, you can very you can be verified on the desktop. So I just saw it. So just um after your your profile, you see something like get verified there. I'll I'll check probably this limit it has some clouds at, attached to it but check it if maybe it has some other um, things you have to have um fulfilled before being verified but if it is there on your profile if you have the option to get verified please do so um the next one is okay take the test skills assessment so linkedin have all these assessments tests that you can take so you do that so you do that then um Bertley him and test margin and everyone you can just check who, you can log in with your um desktop as well so it should be there just um, after your name in your profile you see the gets verified there but i'll check if it has some other clauses or other things that has to be fulfilled first before it can be verified verified so um you should link you should add it to relevant sites just as i've stated before maybe you have the other portfolio which i'm sure you have one before the end of your training at Sten academy so because you'll be working on one on thursday then you should grow your network so you should it should be targeted not just like asking different people like just random persons to connect with you so now let's take a look at the challenge but before we do that any other question on the linkedin profile well let me let me just share my screen i think this is okay let me let me share my own profile this thing so that
Okay, so this is the get verify that I was talking about. So just there, you see your get ver verified, like verify now. So you can just click on that and then you'll be verified. So yeah. Then the next thing is the challenge. So what do you, you don't have that. Okay. Mm, I, will do, I will check if maybe there is any other thing that has to be done. I don't know why. But uh, any other person, check your profile if it's there to like verify to verify. Oh my, it's not on stuff, it's on mobile as well. I think it's on boots. It's on boots. So, but you can just let's just leave that for me. You can um, put it back to that. And I'll also check, like, just to find out why it's not showing on yours. So for this week, we'll be looking at uh, the LinkedIn profile optimization, how you should optimize your LinkedIn. So basically, the challenge for this week is for you to update your LinkedIn profile. And here's a link to the careers manual. So this is just like a disclaimer I should. Then the, these are the checklists that your LinkedIn just to show, just for you to be sure that your LinkedIn is up to date. And here there's this um, extension, career flow extension, which I think is really cool. So you can install that on your Google Chrome. So just and um, then you can use it to update your your LinkedIn. So to show how updated your LinkedIn is or how optimized your LinkedIn profile is. So you can also use this checklist for that. So it should include your name, the headline, your banner, your profile link to your portfolio website. So um, the address, your address and contact information. So recent employment and education should appear at the top of the page. Then professional summary should reflect 50 word summary of in, in your CV. Then your experience your experience, then your education, award and recognition, projects. So this, all this stuff stated here should be on your profile at the bare minimum. So all of these things should be there. So at the bare minimum. Then other things that you can include, just like your recommendations, if you have publications, you can include all of those things there. So that's what you work on for this um, week. And I know I included, you should include um, your your portfolio link there so by the time you make the submission you would already have a website so you should put the link there as well so for the submission you take a screenshot of your linkedin profile just like how it is on the slide so you should take a screenshot starting with the top matter your about section your experience your education your projects then and if you have other certifications you should include them as well so you should take a screenshot then put them in a slide and submit it on 10x then also in your um, submission you add the link to your to your linkedin profile so that it will be easier to just check the profile exactly rather than just checking your submission only so that is that for this week. And here are some other examples of um, LinkedIn profile. You can just check. There are also LinkedIn profiles of um, owners from the So you can check their their LinkedIn just as and then use it as a guide for yours. So that is that about the LinkedIn profile. So and one thing I would like to state is. It's actually yes, you should be able to verify with your Gmail. You should be able to verify with your Gmail.
please be able to verify with your email and your passport so you know that thing that we ask for I think depending on your national first. So but for mine is requesting for my passport and I think that's it. So anyways, that is that uh -huh, as I was saying. So for the LinkedIn profile, once you've updated your LinkedIn profile, it's not just leave that that's like for this week, then like you've updated it and that is that you've done the tax for week 12 and then you leave it. The LinkedIn profile is for you to like be updating it as you go along and even as much as possible moving forward, especially now like that you are seeking for a job, you should try to like be posting maybe once a week. You can start with once a week. Just post about stuff that you are working on. You can share ideas, like just be just be loud on LinkedIn, like let people notice you there. So you can start with just once a week and then along the line, you can increase your uh, your online presence like that. But please don't just leave it and just leave the profile as it is like that. And on LinkedIn, you should also be um, even scouting for recruiters yourself. Just check for people and connect with them and the likes. So, you know, so that is for the LinkedIn profile. So any question? Any question? All right, so I assume you understand everything that has been said. So the deadline for the submission is on Monday. I'm sorry, not Monday. It's on Saturday. It's on Saturday. So I'll right, see you everyone later. Have a nice week and enjoy the rest of your day. Okay, Abraham. Uh, uh, how can we use that tool, like to optimize our profile? There was this extension. Okay, the extension. So is um, Google Chrome extension. You download this and then. Okay, let me show you mine. Um, let me see. My profile is not up to date. So... Let me see. Okay, so this is the extension. This is okay. So if you install extension on Google Chrome, you can see my screen, right? Yes, we do. Okay. Okay. So if you install the extension on Google Chrome, if you come to this place, so you can see all the extensions. So this is the career flow extension. So open LinkedIn profile, but I've already done all of those things. So this is the extension here. Once you open your profile. So you see it here. So if you click here, it will ask you to sign in. And once I sign in, it will be able to like, it will just specify oh, your your LinkedIn profile, you say 67% optimized and this percent optimized. And it will be able to show you other places that you have to work on, say your about section, your headline, and the likes too. So it's just there. You understand now? Yes, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. All right. So. Okay, so I guess that that's so we can call it today. All right.